concept art, also known as reference sheets. Pages dedicated to character creation, prop designs, and architectural plans, something artists dread drawing because it's the one thing stopping them from actually beginning on their projects. Wait, is that just me? Oh. What's good, laptops? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we discuss all things comic book making. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out some of my previous videos so you can learn the ins and outs of the comic making process. In today's video, we are going to be going over concept sheets and reference art, so make sure you stick around until the end. By the end of this video, you'll know what makes a good concept sheet, how important concept sheets are in a professional field, and anything else you might need to know about making reference sheets. But before all of that though, I want to highlight today's comment of the day. This comment comes off in my last video going over adding humor to your comics. The link to that video will be up in the top right hand corner right now in case you missed it. Thank you so much for this JUICY comment. Don't forget laptops, if you leave a meaningful or insightful comment on this video, I might just shout you out in the next one. So let's jump right into the topic of today's video. What even is concept art? Looking at this definition, we can see that concept art is a visual representation of how design should look before the final product. We create concept art to avoid error in the long run. Typically, you'll see concept art in animated films and TV shows. If you've ever bought an art book, then just think about all the designs you've seen in there. Like I mentioned earlier, concept art is meant to be used as a reference. Don't confuse concept art with illustrations, because although similar, both are entirely different. With illustrations, you spend hours upon hours rendering and making the best drawing possible. With concept art, while colored in ink sometimes, the look and feel are what should be focusing on. For this reason, many of your concept art designs might get shot down. And when you feel like crying... Well, <laughs> good luck, Charlie. So how does this look? On the screen you should see some examples of what's known as character sheets. Character sheets are helpful in the animation field as well as comic book making because it gives you a checkpoint for how a character may look in the long run. Typically I'd recommend making one whole sheet dedicated to four turnarounds for one character if you're working professionally. I've heard some animators mentioning needing six turnaround angles though so it's always good to practice different perspectives for your characters. For a simple comic character reference sheet I'd say a front view, back view, a few headshots and props are all you need. On the screen you see a few examples of reference sheets I've created over the years. It's easy to see illustrative qualities, like the rendering and lighting in this picture, but just know that some of these got scrapped at some point and sent back for revisions. Usually only the behind the scenes see these reference sheets, so I've seen some artists try to market their concept sheets as exclusive illustrations, aka character bios. I'm sure you've seen some character sheets included in some comics or manga you own, with fun facts sprinkled here and there. By adding some facts, you add some additional value to your planning drawings. Side note, don't ever do those get to know my character challenge things with like 40 facts including blood type, star sign, and all that irrelevant information. None of that is important for actually making your story and should only be seen as something to kill time with. <coughs> Moving on. The next thing you should be seeing on the screen is prop design. This is the sheet where you plan on how you might want certain weapons or items to look. I try to mix this into my character sheets because, well, I'm lazy. Similar to the character sheets, prop design sheets can include sketches, ink drawings, or fully rendered concepts. The whole idea of a reference sheet is to give you, or the people you're working with, something to reference. The final type of a concept sheet is the background design. And these are the sheets where you dedicate sections of a paper to an entire landscape, sort of similar to a thumbnail. This is helpful for testing out different materials and compositions. On the screen you should see a few of my all-time favorite background designs. So what makes a good character sheet? Let's make a quick little checklist. 1. Concept Art Concept plus art. Don't focus on the illustrative qualities. You want to explore many different styles and ideas. Don't just settle on one concept and allow feedback from others for a fresh perspective. Number two, research. If you only know how to draw one type of tree, then research a bunch of different tree species. Don't limit yourself to an oak tree when you could be drawing a palm tree or a fern tree or a birch tree. Expand your arsenal to create diverse concepts. Number three, it's okay to think inside the box. Creators are often told to think outside of the box, to be original and unique. But why fix what isn't broken? If you were designing a fantasy world, why wouldn't you incorporate some medieval architecture? You get what I'm saying? While it's more than okay to break the mold, don't be afraid for taking inspiration from already successful concepts that work. Number four, draw loosely. Since this is not the illustrative phase, you don't want to commit to anything. Stop worrying about that line you can't get perfect. Even though you may be inking or coloring a design, don't think of this as a final product. Be sketchy and loose with your work. Hey, scrap it if you need to. Number five, understand composition. Pop quiz, how would you define composition? 
Hmm? Most people might say it's how you frame a shot using an arrangement of shapes or forms. Although correct, that isn't everything. Understanding composition entails you to experiment perspective, value, staging, and other color palettes. Number six, actually use perspective. While designing your characters and environments, play around with different angles. This will not only make your world feel more real, but you may think about your environment in a way you never would have if you had made every single design drawn in a straight on perspective. Number seven, utilize perception. This is where you want to tell a story with your designs. In this illustration on the screen, we see a man on a boat approaching his lady on top of a bridge. If we look at the figure placement, the man has not yet reached his destination. Look at the water. This creates a narrative and is much more interesting than if he were in the same space as the lady. Number eight, understand value. Think grayscale. Every color has an assigned value and correlates with different levels of brightness and darkness. For objects further away, you'd raise the opacity or the brightness so they appear foggy and transparent. While you're focusing on value, depth should be your primary concern. Now, let's dig a little deeper into the professional field. Like I said before, concept and reference art can be used in the comic book making process. It can also be used in the animation field. Did you know you could also make some quick money doing reference sheets on the side? No kidding, I've seen tons of Facebook groups requesting concept artists for their games, comics, or original ideas. Being able to crank reference sheets out has a high payoff, so take advantage of them. While I personally dislike spending so much time making them, concept art is very important in any design field. For further studying, I recommend you check out any art book. I personally own the How to Train Your Dragon art book because I love the movie's art direction. And well, I cried like a bitch during the last movie. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. If you found any value, please Detroit smash the like button. Please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more of my juicy content. Be sure to check out my previous videos so you can learn all of my juicy secrets to creating comics. Like always, you can find the links to all my social media accounts down in the description below. Please share this video around the other artists you think this might help. Drop a comment down below on what you'd like to see next. I might feature one of your comments in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.